a bright breeze, dandelions just higher than the grass. A bright breeze, dandelions just higher than the grass. Piercing wind, the chestnut seller's fingerless gloves. Piercing wind, the chestnut seller's fingerless gloves. Well, most teachers, most teachers will know that haiku is a Japanese poem, and they probably also know that it's three lines, and traditionally, in Japanese, five, seven, five syllables. So that's 17 syllables in total. But unfortunately, that's usually the extent of the knowledge that our teachers have. And they do a really good job teaching just knowing that it's a syllable counting poem. But sometimes they become just a syllable counting exercise. If we try and think of haiku as a, a short poem split over three lines, usually a phrase and a fragment put together. So a phrase being almost a sentence split over two lines coupled with a fragment that might be not exactly to do with the phrase itself. So they jam up against each other we juxtapose them against each other, setting up some kind of what we call surprising comparison. Uh, it sounds complicated, but it's not. I'll give you an example. Winter wonderland. Even the burnt out car looks beautiful. Winter wonderland. Even the burnt out car looks beautiful. Here we've got a phrase. Even the burnt out car looks beautiful split over two lines, and a fragment, Winter Wonderland. And the surprising comparison is, well, a burnt out car looking beautiful. Other important aspects to include in a haiku. Traditionally, it should include some kind of image from a particular season. So what the Japanese would call kigo, but it can be any phrase that throws up a seasonal thought. Here in Britain and in Japan, if we say, Daffodil, we're immediately in spring. Nearly Mother's Day. My best daffodils bent low in the constant rain. Nearly Mother's Day. My best daffodils bent low in the constant rain. Basho, the great Japanese poet, said to us, to know of the pine, go to the pine. And to know of the bamboo, go to the bamboo. Don't stay behind your desks and write. You can write haiku anywhere, but really out from behind your desk. Leaves fly in the breeze, big trees. I'm thinking of the leaves, um, not actually flying, but like moving around flying in the breeze. And then I'm also thinking about the massive trees. So I work in an inner city school. Uh, we do a lot of work in the classroom. We do some work outdoors, um, but this has been a great activity today because obviously we can actually experience nature, experience the outdoors, and they've really got a feel for what they're doing today, so it's been fab. An important element for teachers is to get kids' confidence up by reading out to the rest of the class, reading out twice. Get rid of their inhibitions. Haiku are good for that because they're short and they can feel that nobody's going to laugh at them if they get it wrong because the poem already feels a little bit strange. So reading it out builds the confidence of children and also they begin to share things amongst each other. The cold air on my bare legs, bugs crawling. The cold air on my bare legs, bugs crawling. The sound of fresh leaves moving with the wind, pigeons flying. The sound of fresh leaves moving with the wind, pigeons flying. I would recommend it to someone because it's all about inspiration and like writing down what you feel. You can really write down and like feel the environment. Clear skies, trees blowing in the wind. I feel the heat on my face. Clear skies. Trees blowing in the wind. I feel the heat on my face. 
This kind of poetry might at first, to an English teacher, feel, well, why would I want to teach a three-line poem when I've got all these national curriculum targets to meet? I think that it's perfect because you can look at syntax, shortening syntax where I need a the or an a, or whether I can get rid of one, stripping things back, learning how to bring things back to the bare bones, so be minimalistic without losing the sense of what you're trying to say. I just liked it. I, I liked like how it was relaxing. I liked it because the trees were moving and the pigeons were like flying and like insects. This place, I kind of described it from the outside and it's normally where I go to relax in my mind. If people in my, like in my class so far I don't like getting engaged. They think like haiku or poetry is just really boring. But since I've been here, I've learned that haiku is actually really fun. Yeah, so it's super important for them just because they get to get a feel for what they're actually doing. They can actually see, hear, smell all the senses around them and it gives them such better vocabulary, it gives them a better experience, that it really gets them thinking about the way things are happening or how things are happening. So they've been full of ideas today, which has been brilliant to see.